Hi, I don't know if you've ever looked in one of these. It is a synchronous motor out of a microwave oven. It's the motor that turns a turntable. Anyway, let's get it apart and have a look. There are four tabs holding the cover plate on, and if we remove the cover plate, what we see is a bunch of gears. And if we can get those gears out, there we go. Then we have a magnet in the centre, which is a little rotating magnet right there. There it is. So there's the magnet in the center. Then there's a plate on here. And we remove that plate and what we have is an electric coil. I'm sure you've all coil. seen these on YouTube where they're used as generators. They just put a hand crank on it, turn it around and light an LED or two, which is really cool. But the fascinating thing about them actually is this little arrangement. So here's the coil. Now, a coil is actually wound in that direction with the two outlets here. And here's the magnet. And the magnet is oriented so that the north is that way and the south is that way. So as we look at it, and that's rotating in there, we have that north-south field as a rotating field cutting here. But normally when you see these things actually, it's like that. So they cut through the lines here, and that's how most people wind their coils. And when you see motors and dynamos, you see them wound like that. Here, what we've got is the coil wound around the magnet. And that's really interesting. What I've done is I've taken everything apart, I've got the magnet here, and if I pop it in there and give it a spin, what well, okay, it's a whole load of nothing. Which is curious when you think about the number of generators that are made from these things. But if you have a look at the case themselves, you'll see there's some little bent pieces of metal in there. And those bends come up into the coil. So if I put that coil back in its case, and then the magnet in there, and give that a spin, what I'll get is about two or three volts, depending on how quickly I spin it. Now that's really curious. But we did this in video 1030. When we actually, if I can get this back out, <laughs> There we go. When we pass a current down here, of course, it's a coil of wire, and it creates a north face and a south face, and it's an alternating current, so the north face and south face swap over. But we have the north and south here on the edge of the coil, which is what you'd expect. What these bits of bent metal do are they direct the flux path. Now, we've done this in video 1030 when we took a speaker magnet, which was essentially the same arrangement but in permanent form, so we had a speaker magnet just like that and that was north that was south and we put some bent metal around it and what that did was bend the flux so effectively these little bits of bent metal here and here twist the flux around so that we get a north face pointing directly at the magnet and that's why it spins equally it's why it generates when we spin that just in the coil nothing happens when we spin it with the bent metal then the flux from the Magnetic flux from the circular magnet is being forced around and that's what cuts the coil and that's what generates. Now that really is fascinating. My thought here is, can we take this little arrangement and make it bigger? Now the reason we'd want to do that is instead of winding lots and lots of little coils, what we could do is wind one big coil and that would be awesome because that's really easy. So to test this idea, I've got this, which is a bicycle wheel rim, obviously. This one's steel, and obviously we're going to have to use steel. Quite a lot of them are aluminium, but this one's steel. And the idea is to chop all those little faces in here so that we can put a coil around the rim, and that should bend the flux round to create us a north-south. But we'll be able to do that by just winding one big coil instead of winding lots of little coils. So the first thing to do, obviously, is to chop this into lots of little faces and then wind the coil. Okay, and that's it finished. Now, effectively, what we've got here is two rings. We've got one ring this side with bent over teeth that way, and every second tooth is this ring with bent over teeth that way, because I cut slots in here, and then I slotted it here, 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 swapping around every second tooth, so we created those two rings. And then I glued the whole thing together with a bit of fiberglass and given it a sand. So 
What I want to do now is wrap it with some wire. And the wire I've got is this stuff, 18SWG enameled copper wire, because I've got a load of it. So I'm just going to wrap this around with a coil and see how we go. Okay, so here's my wheel laid down. I've connected up to the multimeter and I'm trying the Capton tape trick that I was asked to try, so hopefully you'll be able to read the meter. I'll still read it out for you, but hopefully that's going to act as a filter. What I've got here is two ceramic magnets facing north, south, north, south. And if we push them along that ring, we get generation. <laughs> there's, there's the ceramic magnets. We put them that way. And there we go, 98 millivolts. That's actually super cool. If I put the magnets here, incidentally, onto the side there, and give them a push, next to nothing. Okay, at this stage, 100 millivolts is pretty cool. I mean, in a general sense, it's not something to write home about, but it is telling us our idea is working, which I think is really cool. These interdigitating fingers are working a bit like an alternator, a bit like that motor that we took out of the microwave, and we got one big coil, and we're generating something out of it. Now, I don't know if you remember this thing. This is the flywheel. And one guy posted, what on earth are you going to do with that? And I thought, well, what I'm going to do with that is this. I'm going to put those two together, stick some magnets on here, and then we'll see what that generator can actually produce. Now, what's the point of it? The point of it is there are 36 poles on here, and I only had to wind one big coil, this big coil here. I didn't have to wind 36 little coils and get them all arranged. This is in beautifully true. I've got 36 little poles, one big coil that I had to wind, and so it was much, much easier to make. So one of the benefits is it's easier and cheaper to make. So we'll have to see how that actually performs, but we know it will perform to some degree because we've just shown that it does. And it's based on the idea of an alternator, and it's based on that thing from um, microwave ovens you see all over the internet. So it stands a very good chance of working. Now, it is a bicycle wheel, so I'm going to temper that a little bit, but I'll certainly be doing that in a future video, because I've basically spent all day playing around with this. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do remember to subscribe, and thank you very much for watching.